What is going down guys? In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create professional navigation bar tabs using HTML and CSS. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. So I've already created a new index.html file um, and I've already typed up the bare bones of a HTML document as you can see. Um, and we're going to give this, uh, this web page the title of professional navigation bar tabs. Um, because that's what this tutorial uh, is going to be demonstrating today. Okay, so then within the body, we're going to create a new div class. Oops, spelled that wrong. Div class equal to nav underscore bar, um, which obviously stands for navigation bar, and close off the div. Um, and then we, within here now, um, we're going to do this slightly different to a conventional um, navigation bar. And conventional links, we're going to use an unordered list um, for our navigation bar, which is just UL. Um, and then within here, we're going to create um, type up li tags and close off the li tag as well, which is um, which just stands for obviously a list item. And basically, um, we're going to create six of these, six sets of these because in this tutorial I'm going to be uh, creating six links for my navigation bar but obviously you can create however many links you want so then within the first um, list item we're going to type ahref equals index.html close off the a tag and then uh, we're going to call it home it's going to be the name of the link and we're going to copy and paste this another five times within all the other list items um, just to make it a bit quicker and speed up the process basically um, and then we're going to change obviously the names and the links so I'm going to have about um, I'm going to have gallery um, shop um, feedback and contact I think and don't forget to change the links as well obviously you can name these navigation bar links whatever you want um, I've just obviously called them home about gallery shop feedback and contact for the purpose of this tutorial um, but you can change them to suit you okay so that's um, that's all we need to do for the HTML side of things for now so we can go to file and save and then I've already created a folder where I've saved this file on my desktop which I've and I've named the folder um, navigation, professional navigation bar. So open up the file in your preferred browser and, as, and this is what it will look like at the moment. So you've got a bullet point list of your six links. Okay. Um, so now it's time to add some styling using CSS. So we're to do that we're going to create a new file and we're going to save this. Uh, we're going to create a new folder in your website folder called CSS. And within the CSS folder, <clears throat> sorry, um, we're going to save the file as style.css. And uh, yeah, now we just need to make sure in the index.html document um, that we link the style sheet uh, to this document. So to do that, we uh, just type link rel equals style sheet href equals CSS slash style.css because obviously we placed it within a folder called CSS in the website folder and file save so now that these two so now these two um, files will be linked successfully um, and now it's time to start typing up the styling so we're going to target the body first the body tag and we're going to add a margin of zero or well um, just auto margin auto um, just to get just to remove any of the uh, default margins around the web page we're going to add a background color of a really light gray ef 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 um, and we're going to add a font family of arial so that um, the font throughout the entire um, web page will be arial so file save refresh in the browser and uh, you can see that's made some changes and you can see that the style sheet has successfully linked because um, the styling has been implemented on the web page 
So now we're going to create a new, we're going to target the navbar class. And in here we're going to add a margin of auto to centrally align the navbar in the centre of the page. Um, we're going to add a border bottom of one pixel, solid and black. Um, and you'll see why in a minute. We're going to add a width of 860 pixels because we're going to add a padding now of um, 0 pixels by 20 pixels by 0 pixels by 20 pixels. So the left and right padding will be 20 pixels. And I want the whole width of the navigation bar to be 900 in total. So that's why the width I've set to 860 because 860 plus 20 plus 20 is 900. <clears throat> So you can see when we <coughs> save and refresh in the browser, um, <coughs> that it's now added a border and, and things like that, and it's now centrally aligned um, in the middle of the web page and things like that. So yeah. So now we're going to target the navbar UL. Okay. So this is the unordered list tag with inside the navbar class. Okay. So we're going to add a padding of zero to remove the padding, uh, which is there by default. And we're going to add a list style of none. So this will remove the bullet points that we don't want on our navigation bar. So file, save, refresh in the browser, and you'll see now the bullet points have disappeared and also the default padding has disappeared. Um, but it's still in a list at the moment. Um, so now we need to change that to make it look more like a navigation bar. So now we're going to target the navbar ULLI, which is the list item, all the list items within the unordered list within the navbar, basically. So we're going to add in here a float of left. And you'll see now when we go file, save, refresh, you will see that yes, the border has gone to the top. We'll sort that out in a minute. But now all the, all the navigation links are in a line, okay, rather than um, in a list, which is what we want. Um, so now we can add in here a font size of, we'll say, 16 pixels, um, and a font weight of bold, so this will make the text bold, um, and we'll also add a margin right of 10 pixels. So this will separate um, each of the navigation links by 10 pixels on the right hand side as you can see. So we've now um, got the font size of 16 pixels, it's bold and um, each link is separated by 10 pixels to the right. So it's looking more like a navigation bar now um, but it's still, there's still a long way to go yet um, for it to look like what we want it to look like. So we'll go back into the styling um, and we're going to target now the, um, well first of all we're going to go back into the navbar and we are going to add a height of 64 pixels. I've already tested this out before the tutorial and it needs to be 64, um, that's why it's so accurate. So file, save, refresh, that just moves the border um, obviously back to the bottom of get back to the bottom again, um, like we want, because when you add a float to something, uh, to the content within a div, it will, um, it, it will basically float outside of the div in a way, so that, um, so the div won't recognise any content within it, so therefore it won't have a height, so we need to manually set that. So anyway, yeah, so now we're going to uh, target the navbar ULLIA, which is the link within um, a list item, within the unordered list, within the navbar. We're going to add a text decoration of none, a colour of black, and we're going to add a background of hash 6DB1E4. Again, I've already tested this out before the tutorial to save time. Um, and this is like a light blue, a lightish blue. We're also going to add a border of one pixel solid and black um, around each link. And we're going to remove the border at the bottom. Border bottom equals none. File, save, refresh. And you will see now it's looking um, 
sorry, our navigation links are looking more like tabs now. You okay, okay. There's still a long way to go, but you can see that it's starting to take shape nicely. So we're also going to add in here now um, a padding of 20 pixels by 20 pixels by 20 pixels by 20 pixels. Uh, we'll just test this out. File save back to the browser and refresh. Yeah, so as you can see now, um, our navigation links are looking more like tabs. A lot more like tabs now. Really starting to take shape. Um, we could do now though with going back up to the nav the navbar class um, that we targeted previously and adding a margin top of 30 pixels. File save, refresh in the browser, and you'll see that this just moves our navigation bar down a little bit from the top of the web page, just so that we can see it a bit more clearer for the purpose of this tutorial. You may not want to do that. Um, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm just doing it for the purpose of this tutorial to make it easier to see this navigation bar. So uh, now we can add in um, a well, we can target. Oh no! First, we're going to go back into here, um, and we're going to add a border radius. So dash webkit dash border dash radius is 10 pixels. Oh, sorry. Because we're only targeting the top left and top right border radius, um, we need to state that. So dash webkit dash border dash top dash right dash radius is 10 pixels. Do the same again except for top left instead of top right. Um, and then we're going to do dash mos dash border dash radius dash top left. Um, it's obviously 10 pixels as well. And same for the top right. This is so that it works in various browsers. Otherwise, it probably only work in like Google Chrome, and it won't really work in Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox. So we're just covering our backs so that it works in all browsers. Um, so then we're going to add a width um, of 75 pixels for each link, navigation link. Um, that should be about right. We're going to add display of block, and finally, we're going to add text align center. The text is already centrally centrally aligned within each um, of the links, whatever. But I've just added that in. So file save, refresh in the browser, and you will see that it's definitely looking more like tabs now. Um, still got a way to go yet yeah? but you can now see that it is really taking shape and looking more professional and looking like what we want it to look like um so now yeah i'll just zoom out so that you can see okay so then now we're going to go back to our code and we're going to add in a we're going to target um a new um element on our web page, so this one's going to be the navbar ULLIA hover. So this is the hover state for our links um, when obviously the user hovers over them uh, with their mouse. So we're going to add a text decoration none, colour black, so the text decoration of colour doesn't change, but the background we are going to set to hash 96E0E9. Um, um, again, I've already tested this out before the tutorial to save time, and this is a uh, slightly lighter blue, I do believe. File, save, refresh in the browser. When we hover over the links now, yeah, it's a much lighter blue. And you can... Uh... So yeah, obviously that looks that looks good. Quite happy with that. Um, so, the back... so basically just the background colour will change um, when the user hovers over each of the links. On the navigation bar. So now we're going to add in here um, a transition effect, a CSS3 transition effect. So moz dash transition, and this is going to be set to background color 200 ms, which is basically the speed of the transition, and ease in. So it's basically saying that we want the background color to ease in on hover 
We want the background colour to ease in when it changes colour um, at a rate of 200 ms. Um, which I believe stands for milliseconds. I believe stands for milliseconds. Um, but don't take my word for that. So now we need to do the same for WebKit transition. Um, background colour, 200 ms, ease in. So basically, um, just as I'm filling these in for the different browsers, um, basically what it's doing is it's saying that when the user, because we are targeting the hover state of each link on the navigation bar, when the user hovers over a link, the background colour will change to a light blue, which we've already set above. And then we're saying that there's going to be a transition which targets the background colour and it's going to change at a rate of 200 ms and it's going to ease in. So it's going to kind of slowly transition um, into the new background colour when a user hovers over the link. You'll see what I mean. So file, save, refreshing the browser and you'll now see when we hover over a link we've got a nice transition okay when the colour changes. You don't have to add this in at all but I've added it in because I think it looks more professional, more advanced and um, you may want to include that in your navigation bar on your website so therefore um, I'm just showing you how to do it so that you know how to do it as well but I think it looks really really nice. Um, so now we're going to target the, nav the navbar ULLI a hash on link. So this is the ID of on link. And we're also going to do the same for A on link hover. Now you'll see how this works in a minute. But basically, whichever link on the navigation bar has the ID of on link set to it, um, these rules that we are now setting, these CSS rules, will apply. Um, to those links with the ID of on link. So you'll see what I mean. So we'll add a background of white, a colour, a text colour of black, um, and in the hover <coughs> hover rule, we'll also have a background of white and a colour of black so that it doesn't change when you hover over it. Okay? So you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, file, save. Uh, when we refresh in the browser, you'll see that nothing happens at the minute because now we go back into index.html and we can add in here as an example on the home page where it says a href blah blah blah. We add an id equal to on link. The hash in CSS um, stands for id. So whenever you know whenever you want to target an id within your HTML, um, it's always a hash. When it's a class, it's a dot. So you'll see when we now refresh in the browser, the home link doesn't change when you hover over it. The rest of the links do. And it just kind of um, shows the user that they are currently on the home page. Okay, it just kind of indicates to the user. It's like a little user aid uh, that lets them know which page they're on. Which, again, looks professional and it's quite handy to include. Now I'm just going to go back to the navigation bar rule, the navbar rule. And I'm going to add... 22 pixels to the oh no sorry didn't mean to do that didn't mean to add it to the navbar um rule that we set i needed to add it to um just go down um i needed to add it to the navbar ulliA rule that we set and we need to set the padding to 22 pixels by 20 pixels by 22 by 20 file save refresh because you'll just see that that removes the little space that we had at the bottom of each of the navigation links between the links and the border um, but I need to add one more pixel in which I'm going to add to the height so change that to 23 pixels for the height padding the top padding refresh and you'll see now that the navigation link tabs now perfectly touch the bottom border of the navigation bar, which is what we want. 
So now it's really starting to take shape and it's really looking more professional. Looking a lot more professional and where we want what we want it to look like. Um so we've almost finished the actual navigation bar tab styling. Um the next thing that we could do with adding in is just add a border bottom equal to one pixel solid white which is hash FFF FFF um, and we're going to add that to the navbar ULLIA um, hash over hover sorry refreshing the browser and you'll see now that what that does is the border is the border sorry not the border the border overlaps um, the bottom border of the navbar the black border so that it looks like it's part of the main content which we are going to create now. So back into index.html, we're going to add a new div class underneath our navbar div class. And we're going to call this div class main underscore container, which would usually be where your main content of your web page would probably sit. And in here, we're going to add a paragraph tag. And in here, we're just going to type some dummy text. This is the home page. Um, file save, just refreshing the browser, um, and you'll see that that's added that in. So now we're going to add some style into that. Um, and the only purpose of doing this is so that you can kind of see how these navigation bar tabs would work with actual page content. Um, and how you could make it fit to your website, your web page. So in the CSS, we're going to make a new rule. We're going to target the main container, which we've just created. We're going to add a margin of auto to centrally align the container in the middle of the page. We're going to add a width of 860 pixels, along with a padding of 20 pixels. And we're also going to set a border of one pixel solid and black. Um, then we're going to add a minimum height, a min height of 400 pixels. Um, and we're going to add a border top of none, so it just removes the border at the top because we don't need it because the nav bar has already got a border at, at the bottom, hasn't it? And we're also going to add a background colour of white as well. File, save, refreshing the browser, and that's not doing anything. And the reason for that is because we've made a typo and missed the I out of main container because obviously it has to match. File, save, refresh, and you will now see that it's really taking shape and you can see how the navigation bar tabs um, work alongside the, or can work alongside the main content of a web page um, because it looks like that obviously when um, you're on a page and obviously the link is white and stuff like that it looks like it's part of the actual content container on the web page and I just think it looks really really cool and it, and it creates that tab effect that we wanted. So now we're going to add a new rule in the CSS and we're going to target the paragraph tag within the main container. And we're going to just change the font size to 14 pixels. We're going to remove the margin and the padding. So padding zero, margin zero. File save, refresh in the browser. And that just um, um, styles the, uh, the paragraph within our content. Um, so yeah, so that looks nice. So now the next thing that we are going to do um, is we are going to create the other five web pages. Okay. Um, and the reason we're going to do that is because simply because I just want to show you the effect um, of this um, of these navigation bar tabs and how it can work on different pages and things. So basically just go back to your folder where your index.html file is saved and duplicate it, copy and paste it another five times and rename them um, the same links uh, that you've included on your navigation bar. So obviously I've got about.html, gallery.html, feedback.html uh, shop.html and contact.html um, so now these five new 
um, web pages that I've just copied and pasted. I'm going to open them up in my text editor, as you can see, and this allows me then to edit each one. So in about.html, where we had previously id equals on link within the home link, I'm then just going to remove it from there and I'm going to paste it within the about link. And I'm just going to change the content to this is the about page instead of the home page. File save. And then we're just going to do the same for every single page. So we remove ID equals on link from the home link of the navigation bar and move it down in this case to gallery. Okay, and then obviously change your content, things like that. And then once you've done this for every page, um, we will see the effect um, that we've created um, <clears throat> for our navigation bar tabs and how effective they look. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and then we will be done for then for this tutorial then. So <clears throat> there'll be nothing more to do. The rest is up to you then. You can do whatever tweaking you want um, to your navigation bar and your content to suit you. So anyway, so make sure you save those files, refresh in the browser, and you'll now see that when we click on each page, on each link, you can see how the tab effect works on the navigation bar. Um, and it does actually um, give off the effect that you are obviously um, clicking tab to tab, you know. Um, yeah, if you kind of catch my drift. So that's just about it then for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give it a like, a share, and leave a comment with any suggestions for future tutorials that you'd like to see me do. Um, and don't forget to subscribe, if you haven't already, to be notified when I upload new tutorials in the future. Um, and more tutorials are on the way soon. So bye for now, guys.